and definitely felt accepted. But I'll never be one of those guys. I didn't get drafted there. Steph Curry obviously drafted there. Andre Iguodala won the first finals, first championship. Klay Thompson drafted there. Draymond Green drafted there. Uh, and the rest of the uh, rest of the guys kind of rehabilitated their careers there. So me, Blink, how do you go? Uh, how are you going to rehabil- uh, rehabilitate me? What are you going to teach me? How can you alter anything in my basketball life? I got an MVP already. I got scoring titles. So uh, he was just saying like it was it was a it was fun, but it wasn't going to last. And I get exactly what he's saying because there was tons of people. That that looked at KD, you know, kind of as the um, the uh, not the weird kid or something like that, but it was just like he was with the crew, but it was just like, all right, you know, yeah, you can roll with us, you know, and everything, and, and you, you know, uh, you, yeah, 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 you can roll with us, yeah, 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 come on. You know, why not? The guy can shoot. And yeah, Steph is is adored. And again, yes, he got drafted. Uh, I think those fans in Golden State did appreciate him. Uh, But he he's on to something. Yes, they I think they really did, you know, kind of feel a little bit. But, you know, when when talking about, you know, KD, yes, he's with us. He's going to be a warrior. Uh, he is a warrior. Uh, we're going to support him and all that stuff. But we did kind of win without him. But we are kind of pretty good, you know, without him. Now, obviously, um, against Toronto, they really could have needed to use his services. But, you know, it was a lot of guys that was hurt. They might have. We don't know what could have happened if Klay Thompson had stayed in that game and uh, been healthy for their entire series. But. Again, KD talking about, you know, how you feel. I don't think a lot of people should, you know, uh, criticize him on on this matter because I just believe he's talking on something that we already knew about and people were talking about anyway. Uh, I have used to hear a lot of people say, you know, well, yeah, he's on the team, but, you, you know, people aren't going to really recognize him as a warrior. And I think he felt it that way. And then, you know, he was talking about the the, the uh, highs and lows of the NBA. And I want to say this, you know, um, a lot of people are probably going to look at it and say, oh, this guy's complaining. You, you know, you're making all this money. You're playing basketball, blah, 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 blah. Look, I, I get what you're saying, America, the world. But it still is his job. And there is very rarely is there something or someone that will say, I love 100 percent everything that come with my job. And he didn't say he hate his job. He didn't say he hate his life. He just said some days it's difficult to be an NBA player. And I I totally think it is. I mean, everything isn't, you know, uh, uh, roses and, you know, dandelions and, you know, all that. You still have stuff that go on in your life just like anyone else. It's just your bank, bank account is different. So on that, I, I mean, I'm not going to, you know, give him a hard time. I get it, you know, uh, maybe, you know, he's talking about, uh, you know, how your body feel or, yeah, I mean, it, there's so many backstories that we don't know. And I know somebody, I know someone that played in the NBA and, and, and there were challenges that they faced, you know, during their, during their NBA career. And they weren't a mega superstar. So just imagine if you're a mega superstar Everyone and, and and I'm not trying to give Katie a break because them fake burner accounts. I know people are going to bring them up and all that stuff. Yeah, you brought some of this stuff on yourself, but he's just speaking the fact. It is, uh, you know, I'll give him that. It's not always gravy every single day. That's what the you know th- that's what the NBA. That's what the facade is. That's what the image is that they want. You know, they want you to know. You know that this is so glorious. This is so great. But it's a lot of stuff that goes into. You know, that that stuff, you know, being presented that way. So 
KD, he's going to keep talking. And we're going to keep, you know, chiming in. Uh, he'll never, he'll never just you be like, you know what? I'm just not going to say anything and uh, it, it'll be all right. Nope. He's going to keep talking and then we'll still keep chiming in on what he's saying. There was something uh, that, and I thought I had this here and I don't know how I forgot, um, but I'll bring it up now and I'll talk about this and see if you guys have heard uh, this information. And you listen to the Wait a Minute Show with your man, Jelani J.B. Bodie, and we are talking sports. So this past week, um, and we're going to get into this game uh, a little bit later, but this past week, the Dallas Cowboys took on the uh, uh, New York Giants. And, and it was a thorough beatdown. The, you know, the, the Cowboys gave the Giants the business. You know, they basically gave them the business uh, like, no, I'm not going to say that. No, I don't, I'll hold on to that later, you know, because I, I want to make it through the show alive before something uh, really, really bad happens to me. Uh, MB. Yeah, so I'll hold that. But at the end of the game, there's this video out there of this kid uh, who's in a Saquon Barkley jersey. He's in a New York Giants hat, and he's out there waiting for players to come through. And one, Demarcus Lawrence, comes through uh, on his way to, I guess, home or wherever he's going. But he's leaving the stadium, and the kid walks up and asks Demarcus for his autograph. And Demarcus kind of looks at him and keeps walking and tell him, you know, you need to get get the right jersey, kid. You know, and all this stuff. And so the kid turns around. Obviously, uh, he's down, you know, about it. And you can tell in his facial expression, you know, like, hmm, <laughs> you know, and all that stuff. And now, you know, people have, you know, kind of chimed in and uh, um, about the whole situation and, and how it was handled. And Demarcus Lawrence just came back out and said, you know, he doesn't regret anything that he that he said, anything that he did, you know, at this point. Uh, and, and he's not apologized for anything. He said that, if, you know, if the kid, you know, life is scarred or something like that. Yeah. You know, he'll apologize. But he said he think the kid is going to be, you know, all right. And, and I, I, I'm right there with him. And, and this is what I'm going to say, you know, uh, about the whole situation. I know what it's like to be a kid. Obviously, all of us know what it's like to be a kid, but I know what it's like, you know, to to want to get other players autographs. Growing up, I was big, 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 still am, big Piston fan, big Piston. I'm talking about Z, Joe Dumars, Mark Aguirre, James Buddha, Edwards, Bill and Beer, uh, William Beckford, Gerald Henderson. Yeah, all of the guys, you know, that you probably never heard of, uh, you know, on that team. Kelly Trapuca, all that. So when I went to the games, though, and who they were playing, I still wanted to get the autographs of, of other players. I remember seeing Patrick Ewan. I remember seeing Mark Jackson. You know, I remember seeing uh, uh, Michael Jordan, you know, Scotty Pippen. I remember seeing those players as, as a kid growing up. And it's just like, even though I don't want them to win I still want to get their autographs because they're you know they're professional basketball players and I'm a kid I'm like these guys are the best of the best but at no point in time though and maybe I was just a different kid that I think like if I didn't give or if I didn't get the autograph that I would just be so disappointed or maybe devastating. I'd be like, dang, you know, I didn't get it. But then it's like, all right, let me try and get, you know, somebody else's autograph or something like that. So to me, I don't think the thing that Demarcus Lawrence was just horrible. Could he have signed the autograph? Yes. You know, we all know that. But it's like this kid is in full blown, you know, Giants gear. He obviously didn't come there to Dallas uh, wanting the Cowboys to win. And DeMarcus pointed out something, you know, there's a lot of Cowboy fans that don't get his autograph. There's a lot, you know, and, and, and at the end of the day, here's what I'm saying. And, and I'm not trying to uh, uh, just solely put it on the parents, but I'm just speaking in my uh, humble opinion. If my kid is there in a visitor's jersey and you're trying to get autographs, 
I'm going to let my kid know ahead of time. Look, these people are in the division. I'm speaking as if I'm this kid's parent. These guys are in the division. They don't like each other. And you're in, you're on the road in enemy territory with the Saquon Barkley jersey and a New York Giants hat. Son, there is a possibility. I just want to let you know. There is a possibility that one of these guys might say no. Now, we don't know if if he got someone else's autograph before that, that's a cowboy. If he got someone else's, that's an autograph. Uh, he's got someone else's autograph after the mark has passed by, that's a cowboy. We don't know that. That could have happened. But you got to set the expectations. The kid is out there in a visitor's jersey, a divisional foe. There's going to be someone that's not signing an autograph, just in general. They can't sign. It's humanly impossible to sign every autograph. And I know people are going to say, well, Jelani in that case. But look, I mean, the kid was right there. Yeah, you're right. But that still don't mean, you know, he was going to get the autograph. That's all I'm saying. So I think if they had a set of expectation, and maybe they did. Uh, I'm just speculating on this. But... It's like, hey, you got to understand, man, you know, maybe if he was in a cowboy jersey and even DeMarcus said it, he probably would have stopped. So you got to just let him know, hey, son, there's a possibility that that autograph may not happen. If it doesn't, it's all right, because there's a whole bunch of other guys that play in the league that you can get their, uh, you can get their autograph. Because you're right. I mean, he was right there. It wasn't like he was behind a fence or anything like that. So I'm sure some other players came out. So, ladies and gentlemen, you know, give, give Demarcus uh, a break. Don't don't be too hard, you know, on him uh, about this situation. Now, what I am going to be hard about on uh, is the NCAA, and I want to pull. I should have pulled this up. Uh, while I was talking. So I'm going to pull it up now while I'm talking. Uh, last week, I talked about how the uh, the the state of California and, and LeBron James was, you know, joining in on this about the uh, Fair Play Act. So basically what this Fair Play Act is, is about, it's about uh, kids that go to a college in the state of California, you know, if the, if the governor signs off on this, that the kids uh, that go to those schools in California will be able to be paid for their likenesses, for their images um, uh, while they're in college. So the NCAA has decided uh, to contact the governor. So, um, and, and this is Gavin Newsom, who is the governor of, of, of California. And they are asking the governor to not sign this or not endorse it. And this is the NCAA Board of Governors. They sent a letter to Newsom urging him. This is from, uh, and actually, let me give credit where credit is due. This is from the score, uh, Jack Brown. So uh, they said that uh, earlier today, the NCAA Board of Governors sent a letter to Newsom urging him not to pass the legislation, calling it unconstitutional. (laughs) And and they they go on to say that uh, uh, this could upend, upend the the competitive balance in collegiate athletics while blurring the critical distinction between amateur and professional sports. This is reported again uh, from uh, Jack Brown from the score. And and it goes on. Let me go in here and say, if the bill becomes law and California's 58 NCAA schools are compelled to allow an unrestricted name, image, and likeness scheme, it would erase the critical, distinct, the critical distinction between college and professional athletics. And because it gives those schools an unfair recruiting advantage, would result in them eventually being unable to compete in NCAA competitions. This is what the board wrote. Uh, they said these outcomes, they go on to say these outcomes are uh, un- 
tenable, untainable, and would negatively Im- impact more than 24,000 college uh, student athletes across three divisions. Right now, nearly half a million student uh, athletes in all 50 states compete under the same rules. This bill would remove that accessional element of fairness and equal treatment that forms the bedrock of college sports. So uh, this thing 